think you can make 10 layups in a row? Bro, what? Left and right alternate? Bro, I, bro I'm right handed, I go left. All right, go my, ahead. Most of my time. 10 Wait, in a row alternate. You got to do it like this, though. Bro, are you crazy, bro? 10 in a row. I bet, I could bet any amount of money you want to bet right now, you don't make 10 in a row. Alternate. Scoop. Bet, bet me $100. 100 Big breakfast every morning. Um, usually lots of eggs, you know, just high protein kind of. Um, just because like my days are usually long, so I just try to have enough protein. So um, they got me with a chef that pretty much makes breakfast, like just my meals. And we just talk about, you know, what I need to make, what I need to eat for the week, or whatever, and she just and she makes it. I'm the man that helped him shape him into who he is today, if y'all haven't known. He's not gonna admit it, but like when, when I first met him, he couldn't dress, he didn't know what was going on, and I had to take him under my wing. Don't be don't be how short I am, but for me, I took him under my wing, so he just won't admit it, but it's alright. You ever had that friend that won't admit something, but you know it's true? Yeah, that's just how it is, and that's fine. Khalid is some, you know, one of the first people I was able to um, connect with when I first come, when I when I was in middle school, and um, you know, we just been friends since then. You know, the way we, we got we got off it wasn't good, but somewhere you know in the middle along the way we kind of like fixed things and we became friends. And you know, I know his family, he knows mine. He comes around, I go around to you know to his family house and stuff like that. For you. You remember those days when we used to play back in middle school? Yeah, you used to pick, get picked last. No, I never got picked last. <laughs> I, I never got. You used to get picked last. I never got picked last. It used to for me. I used to pick, get picked like second, third. But let me tell you this: when you used to get locked up, you give him the ball to me. Yeah, I'm, with the game on the line, I'm shooting that shot. You know, tell me. I used to pass the ball to you because it was no one else to pass. I had to pass the ball to someone. <laughs> Everybody else was getting guarded besides you. They let you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was wide open for a reason. <laughs> I'm, I'm, more of a, like that. I'm more of an in-game shooter. Where? Like you saw James Harden, like he's the type when he's running three-point contests, he can't shoot. Mm -hmm. But in-game, he's making it. I'm an in-game shooter. That's how I look at that. I'm a, I, don't, I don't do the the spot up. The, the, I'm an in-game. That was trash. Hey, you think you can make ten layups in a row? Bro, what? Left and right alternate. Bro, I, bro, I'm right-handed. I go left. All right, go ahead. Most of my time. Ten in a row alternate. You gotta do it like this though. Bro, are you crazy, bro? Ten in a row. I bet I could bet any amount of money you want to bet right now. You don't make ten in a row. Alternate, scoop. Bet, bet me a hundred dollars. A hundred. Two. Yeah, that's count. 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 Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> nah, 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 we ain't starting, we ain't starting, we ain't starting. All right, ready? Pressure! Yeah! yeah. All right, when I make it, that's when it starts. Pressure! When I make it. Go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Yo, how much you owe me? 300? Yo, let me get my bread, bro. <laughs> I'm really close with my um, strength and conditioning coach at Memphis, that's my guy, Coach Dobby. So I'm with him, I'm at his office, and he shows me this picture on his computer. He's like, it's a good picture, you know, he liked it. And his kids saw it, they liked it too, you know, we were all just in there. And his kids are like, what, seven and 10 years old. And a week later, he calls me, he's like, the, the boys got you a gift. So I'm thinking like, you know, this, they're seven and 10 years old. You know? So one day I show back up to the gym and this was sitting right there. And he's like, open it. I opened it and it was this, like a bigger frame of the picture that they showed me on the, like a little computer screen. 
Uh, it's just like, it was just, I didn't know what to say. I'm like, bro, if these kids were like able to like, you know, think about that, then that's big, you know. But they're family to me, honestly. On this side, dude, now zoom in on the name though, right here. You see that? The greatest signed by me. And the reason is because, you know, I was in my Picasso bag when I made this, when I made this painting. I had to go out there, show everybody, you know, I'm a, I'm a very, you know, um, diverse man when it comes to um, the things I could do. Now I went out there, I was able to put this together. Great piece. So everybody that was out there was hating on me. They didn't think I was gonna be able to, you know, do that. So, so this is my book that I'm reading. I read this every night before I go to bed. You know, I try to get like a, a chapter in or so. You know, Drive by Daniel H. Pink. This is one of my one of my favorites actually. It says, everyone communicate, few connect. What does that mean to you? It's just like, you know, a lot of people just talk. Um, you can meet people that just talk. It's just like empty conversations, no. So it's just like just getting to know people that you meet, you know, you can you come across stuff like that, just learn how to like really really um connect with people you know that's very very important you know, a lot of us just i feel like overlook that feel me man i can't front too much to leave what we saying to the people about this man you gotta come speak to the people you gotta come they, they gotta they gotta hear you speak for me this is just a long vision from eighth grade for me we used to talk about moments like this bro playing high d1 player of the year draft for me bro what can we say, bro? Listen, listen. You see, you know how I say we. You feel me? Because I played like a little tiny part in this. You feel me? Not, not too crazy. Just a little tiny part. But y'all doubted my right, boy. Bro, you doing, doing too much. I'm doing too much. Yeah, you're right. You sure? Yeah. Are right. oh, you feel me, man? This is calm, you know. Um, going into Memphis, really, I just wanted to just go hoop, have fun with it, not really think about it too much, and you know, boom, play of the year. I'm the driver. Bro, you really think you're James Bond? Like, bro, who do you? I'm, I'm Vin, oh, you think you like the transport or I'm, something, bro? I'm Vin bro? Diesel. Vin Diesel? Oh, <laughs> my car. It's about the driver. <laughs> 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 now, you got to get him saying that. Yo, what you say? No, I can't. What you say? Bro, I sound you gotta like, say? You got to say it one time. I sound like Vin Diesel, bro. My son be like, it's not about the car. It's about the driver. You feel me? <laughs> Man, right now, about to go get a COVID test for the 679,000th time. I gotta do this by three times a week. Every time I, um, every time I hang out with people, I gotta go take a COVID test. So that's very much like every day, really. My, my college career kind of just stops, you know? <laughs> I remember the day it stopped. It was like, we were, in, uh, we were in Texas, no, we were in Texas that day, and I'm chilling in the hotel room, and I remember that was right after, I, you know, the, the, my conference, they just announced that I was player of the year, freshman of the year, you know, all that stuff. And I'm chilling in my hotel room, like my whole mind, everything, I was locked into the, into the game, conference tournament. And the next thing it was like, we not playing, like we done. And I remember we flew back to Memphis and I'm sitting in my room for hours. I'm like, yo, like that's it. Like I can't play college basketball anymore. And college basketball is something like playing the March Madness is something that I, 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 I've always watched it. I, I made brackets and stuff like that, followed it. I'm like, my only opportunity to be able to play in March Madness is gone. Like, I can't, like, that's it. And I was just stuck. You know, it was just a weird moment, honestly. I was born in Nigeria. Um, I grew up in Nigeria. I moved to New York until I was 14. And it was different, you know? Um, just the people were just so, you know, the culture was a little different from where I'm from. Um, I had to like really like get used to it. 
um, communicate with people, see, you know, how they think and stuff like that. Do you think Nigeria is um, it was it was very different. There's a lot of things I had to get adjusted to. Um, the good thing was I had family here. My brother already lived here, um, so it was it, it was a it was a lot more for my it was a lot easier for my parents to like you know trust me you know in the, in the United States without them because I had family, my brother, and just him being here you know and just being around him, showing him showing me around was very very important. You know, all through the whole process. I know just having family was 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 big, at least. I didn't really start taking basketball serious until. Continue for two miles. I say like my sophomore year, you know, like eighth grade year. It was cool, like you know, I played basketball, whatever. I didn't really like lock in, lock in. I didn't really think I was gonna. Head northwest on New York. You know, go anywhere with basketball. Continue until, for one and a half miles. Until probably like my um sophomore year. You know, I said like really being in the gym a lot more, you know, consistent in the gym every day, stuff like that. Um staying locked in, playing in tournament, playing against the kids that like quote unquote good. Playing against them every tournament that I went to. And that's when I kinda realized like, yo man, like I'm able to compete against these kids, like, I could go somewhere, and I'm starting to, like, see, you know, the times that I spend in the gym, the work coming through, everything coming together, it's like, you know what, I got a shot to actually be a pro, you know, make something out of basketball. Same release. Yeah. Same shot, same focus, same release. Same release. So make a long story short, my first impression was, I mean, of course, uh, he's very respectful. Ever since then, man, he's he's been literally, he's come in with a humble spirit, knowing that, look, I have to improve on certain things. He doesn't have airs about himself. He works hard, and he listens. There you go. Exactly. Go to your left, one dribble. So you're still ripping. Yeah. On the pick and roll. Pick and roll, yeah. You ripping steel. <laughs> exactly. Good stuff. The one thing I'll say about him is that he's a gym rat. Um, no matter what, he likes to get in the gym. He likes to put the work in. He'll go two or three times a day since you know since he's been here as an eighth grader, ninth grader, and he's consistently done that. My son is a straight two-way player, slasher, slasher and defender, if you ask me. So I see him guard the best player plenty of times in college. Plenty of times. And he can still give you a 20 on a good day while guarding the best player. Some P gonna be the best, one of the best two-way defenders in the league. I can tell you that right now. Shooting should be almost effortless. Yeah. And that's the way you making it? Yeah. That's the way you making it look right now. Keep making it look like that. Ah. Way to keep going. I was late, but got you. People are going to be shocked. A lot of people will be shocked. They're going to they gonna realize they didn't really sit back down and really like analyze my game. I analyze the kind of player that I am and who I could potentially be.